Interview and job search strategies that work. I found a new resource today, and it's for those remote workers. I have I've seen you know a couple websites, right? Obviously, but this is a new one. The website is cybercoders.com. And I'm actually very pleasantly surprised that there's so many remote positions available on their site. So why am I even telling you about this? What's the, what's the reason why? So in a couple of years from now, I think remote work is going to be the norm. And now is the time to get those skills. I'll just tell you about one job that I see. Well, a couple actually. So one in particular is a senior Golong engineer. So if you don't know what Go is or Go language, it stands for, it, well, it's Go language. Google uses that as their their language. They have their own language. <laughs> as Google has, it's called Go. And if you wanted to learn it or teach yourself the Go language, just go to golang.org, G-O-L-A-N-G.org. It's a trend, basically. If you see this type of thing on cyber coders, you know something's going on. The The pay here, it's a full-time position, and it's a work-from-home, full-time work-from-home. It's these three years of professional industry experience in Kubernetes, which are like Docker, Golang, network security, uh, Docker, OpenShift, and cloud. The pay is 130000 to 175000 depending on experience. It's fully remote. They have vacation, medical, dental, vision, all that. And so the very bottom, it says, so if you're a senior go-long engineer with Kubernetes experience, please apply today. So I'm going to put these, uh, this link in the show notes. The other experience, th- those are the primary experience, right? So that one's a little, I'm sure if you demonstrate the ability to have some go-long experience or programming experience, you're you're halfway there. You're not completely there, but you're halfway there. This is the main reason why I myself I'm actually teaching myself Java. And I'm trying to get in the programming myself because I, I know it's gonna happen in a couple of years. They're no longer going to be the person. It's gonna be automated. A lot of the stuff's gonna be automated. You're still gonna need the skills that you have, but why wait to learn something? Uh, because there's a saying called opportunity favors they're prepared. So I want to be prepared and maybe you do too. So the I'm actually, like I said, I'm actually learning Java, teaching myself Java right now, uh, Java 11. I've created several videos about it on my YouTube channel. And after I'm done creating all those, I'm going to actually make that into a Udemy course so that everybody can learn Java themselves, how I learned it basically. Another job that I see on Cyber Coders, again, I'll put these in the show notes, is an Android developer, 100% remote. The full time, it's 120,000 to 140,000. So you need three years of experience in Google Play, Android SDK, uh, Software Development Kit, Angular, React, API, and then App Kit. That's really it, basically. There's a lot of other things. I mean, that's basically what the job description wants you to have. It's those type of skill sets. There's nothing really else on there. And it's not a a senior Android developer. That's just an Android developer. That could mean a junior, whatnot. It does say, of course, three years. But I suspect if you had other type of skill sets, that they would probably actually entertain you uh, for that. Just imagine to yourself, if you learn these programs, these programming skills, basically, just start with Java, for instance. And in my case, that's why I'm starting in Java, because I need to, I need to separate myself from my competition. So if I, I just complement the skills I have now, and I walk into a, let's just say, junior or let's say normal Java developer or Java program, if you will, skill set or job, with all of my other experience behind that, I'm definitely heads above everyone else as far as knowledge is concerned. And the other skills I have complement everything else. And really, I think everyone, maybe if you want to think about that, that's something to do as well. Spend your Sundays, your Saturdays, your time um, that you have to yourself learning something, learning a new skill. And it's very, believe me, it's very difficult to learn on your own. I know that I've had to learn on my, not that I have to, have had to, but when you don't speak um, programming or you don't know what you don't know, it's very hard to communicate to people who are programmers because a lot of times 
they don't want to give you bad information, which in my mind, I doesn't it doesn't really matter to me. I just want to know something about that. So I ask a lot of questions. And the reason being, you know, it, I just want to understand that how it works. What is the why here? What is the how? How do how does it work? What is the why? Give me an example, a real world example, so that I can I can put that in my mind and say, okay, that's what it's like. You know, that's what it's like. For for example, if you're talking about storage, and we talk about the different technologies in storage, such as LUN or well, let's just say LUN, logical unit number. And when you I always tell this scenario here, say, think of a LUN as a cup of water and think of your HBA or your host bus adapt host bus host bus adapters or iSCSI targets as straws and all you're doing is just putting a straw inside this cup of water so the that you can get out the data basically or you can put data in you can fill up the cup of water with more water or you can you can get the cup of water you can extract the cup of water Via the, via the straw. So that's the analogy, some of the analogies to use. And so if you're in, let's say if you're in networking or you want to get in networking, use the analogy of a mailbox, a post office box, a, a, le- a letter. A letter has a to and a from. An IP address has a to and a from, essentially. It'll say I'm going to this website from this uh, IP address, right? It's going to Google or wherever.com from a a source to a destination. And the you know the mail carrier has different departments or autonomous system numbers, maybe different towns that could be considered a autonomous system number. Your zip code could be an autonomous system number like a from in the two. In the same way that email or traffic gets transferred from one point to the other, through a router, through a switch, etc. The same holds true for a, a piece of mail, a letter. It goes from your house or the post office to the other post office, destination post office, then again to the individual's home or the business. And if it's a certified letter, that's the same as, say, a encrypted file. You could say that, something like that. If you think of it like the analogy that way, good point. Your, your cell phone, your cell phone, it works exactly the same way. When you move from one location to the other, you're driving, you're calling, what happens is your cell phone is connected to a, they call it base, stace, base stace, station tower, or a, I guess it's called a, not a master station tower, I think it's a base station tower, basically the cell phone. So in that cell phone tower, it has a list of, it's called a PAL list, P-A-L list, uh, well, maybe different now, but at any, any rate, it knows, okay, your number, uh, okay, you're on T-Mobile, you're on uh, Cricket, you're on Verizon, whatnot. And your number, okay, I have that number, good, you're calling somebody else. So inside the the mechanism, basically on the cell phone tower, it says, okay, I know you need to reach this destination. So what I'll ask is, from that day station, it'll say, okay, who knows the address to this at uh, this destination, you know, for instance, let's say it's an area code. Okay, it has an area code. It has the first three digits. Okay, oh, I know somebody else has a digits of that. So what happened is either the base station tower knows that or another base station tower knows it. It'll go to the other base station tower and says, who, who knows this number or where's this number at? And it'll route that call to the end customer, whoever the end uh, person is. And it does that through, you know, series of switches, like its own type of switching, basically, in the microwave uh, network. It's obviously a lot more complicated than that, but that's just analogy, a quick analogy that maybe you can understand uh, if you don't already understand this. I think I've made mention in my podcast earlier, it's very hard to do it on your own. Uh, And if you have a colleague or a friend or even a Facebook group that you can belong to, that would actually you know, help you learn this type of stuff and not, but not basically judge you why you don't know this or try to, f- uh, fill your, fill your, like basically your eyes are glazed over cause they're talking so fast or they're talking about this and that and the other. And you kind of just break it down, uh, for you. Like, okay, this is how it works. It, it's very interesting. You know, it's very hard to actually, uh, get those type of people who are, some of them, 
they're like, well, I did the hard work, and why should I teach this person and know what I know? You'll get those type of people. That, that happens. And, of course, then you'll get the technical trainers. I would probably start with a Udemy course because everybody in that course know, uh, is a, is, there's one goal. There's a trainer, and that one goal is to learn, uh, let's say, Java, for instance, or whatever it is, Kubernetes or Golang. So you have a collection of individuals who want to learn the same thing. And ask the trainer, what resources are there out there for me? How can I make this simple for me? Do you do one-on-one coaching? Those are the type of things you may want to ask. You may be stuck at a point, for instance, I know in Java, some of the operators or uh, there's a, like a, it's like a exclamation point equals zero for the longest time. Like, what does that mean? And that means unequal to zero. Basically, it's like number one, or let's say seven, little ampersand, which is the and symbol, uh, seven, or no, eight and two. So eight goes into two how many times? Unequal to zero. And so what happened is, uh, on, on, on the end of that, there's a question mark, and then there's like, if true, put, you know, true, or if true, put this, and then if false, put this. And what it is is the and, and symbol is like dividing. So and uh, eight divided by goes into two four times. Is the remainder meaning the exclamation point equals zero? It's unequal to zero. Is it unequal to zero? No, it's not. It's zero because two goes into eight four times with no remainders at all. Zero, nothing remaining. Right. So as unequal to zero? No, it's not. So that would be false. And that's where that comes about. You can see how complicating that is. So I'm just going to post these jobs that I see on Career Builder. I'm sorry, Career, I'm uh, sorry, Cyber Coder on the show notes. So that may be something um, to strive for. Or if you're not already there, maybe something that you want to take advantage of. So I'd like to thank everybody for listening to this podcast and have a great day.